So we wanted to we wanted to be able to take time at the end of the day for a couple of reasons. So one, the conference is really gracious to kind of let us have a little bit of time to talk to you guys because just like a lot of other organizations are shifting from services to products, we've been doing a lot of move and shift to products as well. And so we wanted to share some of that with you guys. We wanted to talk a little bit more about the journey and have some time for all of us to talk a little bit about the journey and what it means and what the implications of that are. And then just, you know, as wrap up and to give people time and a chance to um, have some time to ask questions or follow up on discussion or things that you heard or things we want to talk about a little bit more too. So um, as people are joining, I'm trying to give people the ability to talk, which means you can unmute yourself. If for some reason we get going and I miss you, then please just um, put something out on chat and hopefully Charlie gets in here and he'll be able to see it on chat or just raise your hand. Uh, virtually and I should be able to see raised hands in the in the attendee list here and um, you can make sure that you can get properly unmuted so stop me anytime this is meant to be much more casual much more relaxed hopefully you've got a drink and you're kind of unwinding this is a lot of time to be sitting and just digesting video so I'm glad you guys have hung in here with us all the way to the end um, we talk a lot about the journey right but it, it's it's got some pretty well-defined phases and people start out doing cost management this is just kind of like checkbook balancing right like, like can i account for cost can i do the technology tco can i do um any kind of understanding of cost these are usually people who are doing it much less frequently and are very manual and are doing a lot of direct cost allocation and not consumptive cost allocation. Um, the steps that you see here are the things that we say you're going to want to do in order to move to the next level, right? So if you want to get to internal transparency, you've got to improve your data quality and you've got to leverage some assumptive data, set some business rules, which is, is fine. Your, your goal is to get directionally correct, not to be 100% accurate at this phase. Um, you move from internal transparency where you get everybody inside of IT comfortable with the data and comfortable with the dollars. And you don't want to be in a situation where you publish something out to the business and they come back and talk to the folks managing the SAP application and the SAP application is like, I don't know where they got that number, right? Like, again, undermines trust, undermines their faith in IT and your ability to work together as a team and to um, prepare things. So. Um, it's important to take some time and do this just inside of IT, but you should also be achieving some things, right? This is not, a, you don't want to be stuck in, I'm doing a transformation and we're on pause while my operating system reboots, right? You, you want to do this incrementally so that you can patch as you go uh, and move into a situation where, hey, look, I can start to optimize my investments. I'm going to be able to talk about resource utilization. I could do some basic headcount over skills analysis. I can talk and start to define business services so I'm prepared for that external transparency. When you get to external transparency, that's where you're really engaging the business and you can start to build that partnership. Once you have that partnership, you can do demand management and portfolio optimization and get really, really mature and, and get into that sweet spot that I know there are a couple of you here at the conference who are already here, right? And, and I hope that everybody can learn from your experience. Um, we talk a lot about kind of these actions that you should take, but less time about these pie graphs. And so I wanted to focus in on the pie charts because I think they're really interesting. So, you know, we talked to a lot of people, work with a lot of people. What we found is like, if you're in cost management, how are you spending your day? Right, like, like I do analysis of a month or a couple of months and on average, what do I, how do I spend my time? If I'm in cost management, <coughs> I'm doing a lot of time cleaning up data and doing manual product costing, right? I'm probably doing a lot of benchmarking because nobody trusts me and some what if analysis and I'm having to spend a lot of time doing it because it's very manual, right? So like, this is, this is what your day looks like. And it's all, it's a lot of grunt work, honestly. And there's less value add here. It's hard to justify what's happening. 
but even when you start to get to internal transparency, then that's where you like, now I'm like, I'm starting to do service costing and I'm spending time with that, but I'm adding in scenario analysis and even some multifactorial analysis and looking at how things play together and how what happens in network impacts compute and storage and how the change in our shift to agile is having an impact on support and how that impacts the overall service costing, right? So you could start to really bring in the complexity of what's happening with IT. And then when you get to external transparency, now you're like, oh, well, when you first start, you're doing a lot of time doing the bill of IT, right? And hopefully this starts to decrease over time. But, but now you can start to do some demand modeling and you're spending significantly less time. Look how small these pieces have gotten with data quality management and manual costing, right? And the benchmarking that you're doing here is not because you're not trusted it's a smaller wedge, but it's more value add to really understand where you are in the marketplace and, and to help position that um, and to help you get ever better at that optimization and doing internal benchmarking. Um, so, you know, what you're doing becomes more complex, but the things that you're doing are much more value add both to IT and the rest of the organization, right? So I, I think it's important to understand that like, you have a goal here of shifting not just what you do, but how you do it. And not just creating reports and automating how you create those reports, but changing how you think about IT and changing how the rest of the organization thinks about IT. So you guys can unmute yourselves. Where do you find yourself on this journey and does does this scare you or does this excite you or are you actually like no 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 i want to back up we're going to freeze so somewhere sooner and you may have good reason for that right like i'm not saying that's a wrong thing to do so galen talk talk to me about where you guys are in this um so we're we're a good ways into this you know we are mm -hmm. fully automated with um you know, with feeds coming in from GL, all of our, you know, we, we create our cost pools, we do our allocations. Um, but we, we try to really make it interactive with our, with our team leaders by having a live calculation. So we roll our numbers up every half hour. We drop the entire calculation, run it every half hour. So, so that a team leader can, when they get time to work on their budgets, mm. sit down, do their thing, and then they're going to get an answer back in 30 minutes as to how it impacted them. So they can go out to the business and talk to them and socialize that new information. Wow. That's amazing. And, and did, as you went through that growth, did you, did you see a shift in like, have you been on the journey the whole time first off, or did you come into this kind of? <clears throat> um, I've been on journey most of the, of the time. I, you know, it, there was a small bit there 14 years ago when I started. Um, but we've built it up since since then. And how big is your team? Uh, there's about seven of us. Okay, so has, has their work day changed? Like, is the work that they're doing now different than the work that they did 14 years ago? Oh, absolutely. It's really most of it's in the hands of our of our line managers. Yeah. You know, we're it's really a matter of meeting with them monthly and understanding what they're what their intent was with their budget and we can run through what how it changed we do a rolling budget like you talked about um you know from here's the variance from last month to this month anything i should know anything we need to communicate across the finance world um but we prefer it if they can actually go out and talk to the business themselves and let them know that there's a change in the budget coming or there's a savings coming mm -hmm. um, we we'd rather have them do it first and then yep. we're the the backup so, so I'm going to ask you the question. We get this a lot when we're talking with people and they're like, well, you know, if we, if we start to automate this and do it rolling and people, you know, all the cost center owners or all the line owners are all doing their own budgets and stuff, then like, they're going to want to lay off my people. So you still have seven people, right? So like if the line owners are doing all this stuff, like what are you seven people doing? <laughs> well, they're, you know, that's interesting. They're kind of like CFOs of each of our business units. So we, we were running uh, almost $400 million through our system. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's plenty for them to do as far as keeping the team leaders moving, 
there's a lot of validation that has to go into you know that constant model. We don't have to worry about it as much at the end of the month, but we worry about it every day, right? If something if someone calls and says my numbers look funny, you know we have to we have to look after that yep. every day. It's not just at the end of the month. That's awesome. I, and, and guys, you got to know, like, we, I honestly had met, I, I met Galen at lunchtime today. So <laughs> he's not a plant, but he's just he's the perfect example of this. So Galen, I'm so glad that you decided to show up this afternoon. I could pick on you, but let me pick mm -hmm. on something else. So um, let's see, Ke Keegan, can you, are you in a position where you can unmute? Can you, can you join the conversation? Or are you locked in someplace? I know sometimes you're like in a noisy situation or someplace where you can't. Or maybe Rodney, Rodney, how about you? Where, where are you guys in this journey? Where do you find yourselves? Which, which stage, if I go all the way back to the picture here, where, where would you classify you guys in this, in this journey? You should, you have to, here, let me help you, see if I can help you unmute. I can't, you have to unmute yourself. This is Ronnie. I'm not really in a place I can talk. I'm kind of in a loud, noisy spot. Okay, I'm sorry, Rodney. No worries. So let me just, I'll just, I'll move forward. And if somebody else wants to jump in, we're glad to hear your story. But the point in talking to a couple of different people, kind of grabbing you in here. So Rodney, thanks for being patient and playing along. Um, is that the journey is not the same for everybody, right? You have to understand and define what is your ideal state. Your ideal state may not be the same as somebody else's. And your ideal state reflects more of the business and the organization. And so you have to have this conversation. You have to set a target. Um, and, and then you have to build your strategy, right? You need a roadmap. So th there's a little poll. Um, if you guys are split screened and over on the platforming, hop into post. There's a poll out there about roadmaps. Um, I'd love to see your feedback on that. Um, Otherwise, you could do it otherwise at another time. I think Amy, if I'm correct, those polls are available beyond the talk. Is that correct? You still That's hear? correct. So anytime after this, you can go out there and, and fill in the poll. It'd be interesting to see the profile of people who do and do not have roadmaps. Um, don't feel embarrassed if you don't, because we're finding that more and more people really don't have a fully um, descriptive and actionable roadmap that includes metrics and, and really how they're going to tie together people, processes, governance, data, systems, and all of the kinds of analytics that they need to do. So you have to take the time and, and build, take the vision that you're given from the business and, and build a strategy of how do you support them? How do you partner with them? And then turn it into a plan that you guys can execute on. So how do you decide what that ideal state is, right? You, it's, it's not just where your IT budget is, but what brings value to the enterprise? What are their goals? What are they trying to achieve and, and how can you empower that? You know, what is aligned with your corporate goals? If you don't know what your corporate goals are right now, then you really should be going back and asking your CIO and saying, hey, what, what are our corporate goals? Because I, I can guarantee you that your C-level staff has been given those corporate goals and they're being measured against them. So we need to make sure that the rest of the organization is aligned with those two. And, and then you have to understand budget and your staff capabilities and, and where you need to go. You know, saying that you're going to execute and go from cost management to full transparency and publishing a bill of IT in a year, and you have a staff of one person, is probably an unreasonable expectation, right? So um, it's, it's a good thing to understand what you're capable of and map your roadmap according to that. That can be overwhelming. It can be and feel like a lot of moving pieces because honestly it is, right? There's a, there's a lot going on. You're talking about people, you're talking about data from lots of different sources, from your budget, from your, your GL, um, maybe from invoicing systems. You're looking at operational data, you're looking at labor data, you're looking at project data. So it's a lot of people to talk to, a lot of moving parts, a lot of different kinds and styles of conversations to have throughout the organization. And some people execute this 
awesomely. They do a roadmap and they go and they execute and they're amazingly successful and I couldn't be more pleased. But sometimes every once in a while, people find themselves where they're feeling a little stuck or not sure how to start the process or not sure how to move to the next step. And so that's where um, some of the things that are products that Tavron has developed are things that might be able to help you out. So we have developed a Favron roadmap baking workshop. So to help you build your ITFM or your TBM roadmap, and it's a product, so it's a flat fee. It's a short engagement to provide, to empower you to set your priorities. We recommend that people do this annually, right? Because annually you're going to get new priorities handed down to you from the CEO and the board of directors. Um, is really a best practice thing at the end of any time you do an implementation or maturity project. And if you're feeling stuck, then this is also an excellent way to get unstuck and really shake things up and figure out how to go. So it's a new product we just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of. Um, we also have a data maturity assessment. So if you know that your problem is data, but you're not sure how to get past it, or you're convinced that your problem must be data, but you don't know how to figure it out, again, it's a product, it's a fixed fee engagement. Um, you get out of it a data maturity assessment and some data roadmap recommendations for what you can do right now and the way to get to the things that what your goals are. Um, if what you're doing isn't strictly road mapping or data, but you have other changes and things coming and you just want to make sure that you're not missing something because you can't know what you don't know, um, we do have advisory packages that you can lever leverage. Um, they're buckets of hours um, they can be flexible. You can have solve them to a project or a situation. We have some people that we do advisory to that we set up monthly meetings. And it's a status check and a question and answer session and guidance on how to make a business decision based off of what we're seeing in the industry and what, what best practice is. Um, in some cases, we're actively part of a team and in other cases, we're kind of a silent partner. Uh, we have meetings with the IT finance director and manager. We make them look really smart and they go off and run the business and the rest of the business doesn't even know we exist. So we're, we're willing to work in whichever way is your style and makes the most sense for your organization. Um, these are super easy on ramp. They're packaged, our, our team managed to package this in ways that the starting level for this is like you could put it on a P card. So that's a good thing. Um, but one of the products that I'm most proud of is um, our post implementation support. So this is a, a fixed fee subscription again you know what you're spending, you know what you're getting. Um, and there are three different levels that you can subscribe to to scale it to your needs. And it helps you to continue your growth and ensure that you're getting value. So you can see that uh, we do a run, grow, or transform depending on what's happening in your operation. And our goal is not to sell big packages, right? For most people that are gonna come in kind of at a grow, every once in a while we get somebody who comes in at a transform but maybe you're fresh off in an implementation, you're gonna come in and grow, our, our goal is to get you to run, right? Our goal is to get you and your team educated and self-sufficient and just to be that background trusted advisor and, and to help you go through things. And so that includes the roadmap product. Um, it also includes every budget cycle. So if going through what your cadence is, doing the review of services and your reports and looking for opportunities for growth and change. Um, we do in some of these, um, we do have a cadence for a review of ROI opportunities um, and cost savings and whether or not making sure you're hitting your roadmap milestones. So just like uh, having a workout buddy, sometimes you need an ITFM buddy and somebody who's uh, keeping you accountable to the goals that you set and making sure that you're not getting distracted with all the other work that's getting piled on your desk every day. Um, some of the packages include touch points and extra hours that you can put into projects or whatever you want. And we always include passes for our educational workshops that you can give to your teammates or whoever on your team you want to come to those. And um, we have shifted those to virtual now. So they used to be quarterly in-person workshops, um, but we've manage the technology shift and we do those in a way that they are virtual now and um, have growing your team in that way. So again, our goal is to get you to be self-sufficient. So 
So, so the biggest conversation is, you know, how can we help? How can we help you be better at what you're doing? Um, the online exhibit halls out there, there's lots of downloads and information you can get there. Um, if you want, you can request a one-on-one -on -one or contact us and we can set up a time to just have a, a conversation outside the conference. Or if you want more than a conversation, we do a free, what we call a process assessment, which is over an over the phone remote discussion where we can give you feedback on all of those metrics of people, people process, governance, and data systems reporting, and our understanding from talking to you of a quick spot check measure of where you fit against the, the, the rest of the industry in your area. Um, there's lots of information out at learn.thavron.com that's free for you guys. There's white papers, there's um, other presentations, and there's the calendar that links to our monthly live streams. Um, so we want to allow you to connect with the rest of the community. Uh, we're, we're both Charlie Creasy and I are here on Pathable. You can message us or uh, we'll be checking it frequently during the conference and occasionally after the conference or just send us an email directly to info at thatronsolutions.com. But mostly I wanted to um, be able to free up a little bit of time and give people a chance to ask questions or get clarification or have some time to process all of the information that you guys have been consuming all day because it could be a lot to consume. And Amy, oddly enough, it looks like we have like 20 different panelists. So we have like a million different people who actually came in as the host and not as the attendees, which is fine, but I have no way of seeing who they are. So um, if you're one of those people, I would ask you if you can, if you click on your, if you go to the participants and you click hover over your name under more, you have the ability to rename yourself. And you can at least put your name in there. So it doesn't look like we have 15 copies of host, co-host. So, so who's, who's learned something interesting today? What, what was your big takeaway for the day as we're wrapping up at the end here? I wanted, I wanted to like be able to sit here with a drink and have a conversation with you guys, but like what's been your one really good takeaway from today? I see Ruben there. Ruben, can we put you on the spot? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, hey. so we're, we're all in this host because somebody sent us the link on the one of the chats. So we all to because we couldn't get into the chat. So that's why everybody did the same link. So we're all hosts. That's okay. But look, now I can see you. I didn't know this was here. So this is great, guys. They sent you the right link so that we can uh, have some roundtable. But now I'm like watching that your roundtable here. So Ruben, what's been your great takeaway from today? Like, let's process the day a little bit. It's been a lot of uh, video consumption. So uh, I like the IT transformation maturity value curve because it sets expectations for where you are much more uh, delineated manner than everybody who wants the end product without all the hard work to get there. Um, that's usually the kind of language that we're in. We want the reports and the results without having to give you what our resources are doing, what our mapping of our information is without having a good CMDB, but they want the answers um, is what I found. And being both an ITFM consultant and now running the ITFM practice, it's been a challenge trying to educate my uh, stakeholders into that the process is a little bit slower than just running an Excel file. One, one of the things we found, and you probably already know this because you used to do the consulting thing too, but one of the things we found is if you can find one person, like one person who's willing to play along and at least give you the, here's, here's the results that I want to have, and you can mock out the report and show them the report knowing that the numbers are wrong and say, okay, look, like here's what I could show you but here's your data that's missing, right? Like if you had this server to application mapping in your CMDB and we trusted it, I could give you this, but instead here's what I'm going to give you because that data is really bad. So if you help me and go out and fix that other data, I can give you this other lovely view, right? Have you, have you had that conversation? Have you tried that approach before? Well, I actually went a little bit further than that. I actually did a, a oh, wow. concept for them for the infrastructure, infrastructure stack. Nice. Our three main infrastructure cost centers and laid it out on the TBM taxonomy uh, for them for the platform layer 
uh, but stop there just to, let's just, I know what it cost us so that we can define what a unit cost is for databases, for servers and, and, and for storage and took them that far. And I said, but our big gap is we've just aligned the resources by survey methodology, not really by time card and what they're doing mm -hmm. at this point. So they're going to have to redo surveys. And by the way, we're going to have to resurvey all 800 other people so that we know what our $400 million of IT spend is doing. And mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, we're not doing that. Uh, we're not going to go that far. Um, so you, you get what you're willing to put in. That, that's absolutely true. And you know, they, it's also OK to say, here's what I can give you with these assumptions and constraints. And if this is good enough and you're willing to accept the risk of what those constraints present, they can make decisions based off of that, right? But you're still empowering them to make decisions. And if they say, oh, no, no, right? Like I need it to be more accurate. I need it to be within 5%, not within 15. Then it's up to them to go back and make the changes to empower that. So great job. And it is a long process, right? And you need a couple of wins for other people to get on board, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, when they started seeing the actual dollars and costs and where they're spending their money and, and, and so mm -hmm. it was really eye-opening for them at that point for our, our service leaders and our, and our old CIO. At, but when we couldn't take it to the next level and repeat it, it was not a repeatable process that was sustainable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so now we're actually doing it to that it is repeatable and going through and saying, let's focus on the infrastructure stack and just get our costs and see where we can shave the redundancies. So that's our goal for now for the for this year. That's awesome. And do you have that laid out in a roadmap? Have you guys built a roadmap? I, I actually did a roadmap, level, not to the le level of granularity that you showed, but I did a higher level roadmap and involving our lease management team and all our, our uh, infrastructure managers to actually get to the point where the information is usable. Nicely done. That's awesome. Thank you. Who else had like, not just from this session, but like from the day, like let's, let's, uh, let's just process a little bit here. Who had like a really interesting insight for, it could be from some other session. I really liked some of the stuff that Anja was talking about right before this. And she was talking about learning from previous pandemics and, and looking at human behavior, putting people in the center of how you're making plans, that's that's huge. So that was a great takeaway for me. Who, who else had something that was like, oh man, this was just an excellent moment. It spoke to me really strongly. Anybody have anything else that leveraged out? Hey Nian, strong relation. Um, I think it's been a great day. Um, so for, for us, we've had a um, ITFM solution for, you know, Good part of um, a decade, right, in some fashion or another, but um, it's really been focused around, I would call, um, I don't know, cost transparency, getting, you know, a representation of, you know, what um, IT spending is in business terms, projects, applications, services, right, I think we've done that, so, but it's, it's kind of stagnated there, it's really about, you know, budget accountability and, you um, you know, can we, can we afford it? Like it's not getting to a place where it's helping us to optimize, right. To either reduce costs or, um, deliver greater value. It's almost like, um, the tool has kind of been, um, like I said, stagnating to that level. So I, I really liked, um, I think it was, um, Brian Moreland's talk today around, um, being able to somehow link some of that data to know like, Oh, you've got excess capacity or, yes. or, you know, you've, you're contracting for more than you need. And maybe there's a way to, to look at that. Um, so I, you know, for our next evolution, that's really what I'm thinking about is how do I get to ways that that, that can be formulated to bubble up to us versus every time we want to analyze something that it's, it's a one-off and uh, someone's got to have that idea in order to do it. Cost, cost of operations. And, and if your model is reasonable enough or automated enough, you, you should be leveraging it a lot for what if analysis. And people out in the different IT towers or services may not know to come to you to ask for this, right? Like, like, it's good to go to them again, find somebody who is a trusted partner inside of IT and say, I, I heard a rumor that you're talking about changing how you're doing this. Did you know that with our cost model, we could do a what if scenario analysis for you and show what happens when you shift this group of servers from on-prem to the cloud and what that impact is out to the app TCO or whatever level your model enables you for, right? And, and in most cases, what we find is they're like, you can, right? Like they don't understand the, 
the implications of what you've built and the power of the tool you have. And once you have one person leverage that, word spreads and then you need like a whole process for managing it because the requests become huge. So I don't know whether you've, you've had that discussion and started that journey yet or not. Yeah, I think that's, that's great insight. I think um, we need to be able to, like you said earlier, show some of those um, wins, help some people do that, understand how we can benefit them better and then rig up our tools to do that. I think those type of offline analysis happen when we hear about those efforts and then, you know, we offer to help, but it's not done because, hey, um, you know, the data is right here and it bubbled up and, and there's a way we can quickly see there's an opportunity here. Um, so it's that better linkage, you're right. Like, I think people look to us now as like, oh, you know, how am I doing managing my budget? And, you know, how much servers are my app consuming? It's like, okay, that's interesting, right? But it don't really do a lot with the information. Yeah. Well, it, you're at the fun part of the journey. So I'm going to be really interested to follow along and see how your journey goes for the next 12 to 18 months because you start getting everybody else getting outside of IT finance and spreading through the rest of the organization. It gets exciting. That's where people do some really game changing work. Mm. Thank you. Fun times. Did anybody else, I know we're like, we're, we're near it late. I don't know whether we're going to get shut down, Amy, or not. But if anybody else has like something that really really saying to them something that made them stop and pause something that was really good today. Y'all just exhausted. I know I'm tired. Well, I will, I will wrap. There is conversations out on Pathable, right? So if there is something that occurs to you and you're like, oh man, did anybody else go to the session? This was really great. Let's talk about it. You have that ability out on the platform. Um, if for some reason the work that you're doing this year um, seems like something that you want a little outside advisory on or you want some help putting your roadmap together, please feel free to reach out to us or go check out the information out at the exhibitors section and we'll be glad to empower you and make sure that you're successful as you go through the rest of your changes this year. Great job, Nan. Thank you all for hanging in there and, and reach out to Nan via the exhibitor page or directly under people and continue the conversation with her as we kick off tomorrow morning for day two of Elevate. Thank you all. Have a great night, guys. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Nan.